So you've been kind of detailing your uh, disability, blindness. And I feel like for me, I have experience with disabilities because uh, my father was on a wheelchair, but not invisible disabilities. And there's a lot like we, we really take things for granted. Like eyesight is something that a lot of us don't even think about. But this is something that you've had to talk about. So do you want to share your experience? Because I feel like everything that you're you're talking about is so important because you're really shedding light on an issue that a lot of people don't have experience with. Yeah, thank you so much. I, you know, it's been uh, kind of crazy. Last year, I woke up without eyesight. Um literally overnight, nothing gradual, nothing like that. Um, I just woke up without the majority of my sight. Um, I went to the hospital, they diagnosed me with something called myopic degeneration. Um, it's not macular degeneration, it's, it's quite rare, especially with people under 55. Um, and since then, it's been uh, multiple eye surgeries, treatments every month that are over $12,000 a piece oh. um, in each eye. Um, and even after insurance, thousands of dollars. Um, and, you know, I, just Friday, I had to have an emergency appointment to go back in because I lost even more of my sight um, in the better eye. The left eye has pretty much no sight and the right eye has now been um, uh, diagnosed as legally blind as well. Um, so I can't drive, I can't, you know, um, it's gotten to the point where uh, they have a, um, like a social worker who's gonna be spending the day with me to um, go over how to do things. Um, you know, things that I'm, I'm having trouble with every everyday things. Um, and like I said, all of this happened overnight. Um, so I've been dealing with, you know, the loss of my job because of, you know, losing eyesight and, and just all of this. And, you know, when you have an invisible illness, you really notice the way people behave. Um, I see yesterday I made a post that said, you know, people online use the word blind as a pejorative mm. to, um, for ignorant a lot. Like, um, I've been called blind numerous times. What are you blind? Why? Yes, I am. Mm. <laughs> um, you know, so, so that, you know, that's something I'm more conscious of now, but even, you know, with COVID you go in a store and you see like the, um, the arrows pointing one way and things like that. I mess up sometimes. I can't see the arrows all the time. And people get huffy and I just apologize. I'm sorry. I'm legally blind. I didn't see that. Um, or doing simple things like putting a, a debit card in the card reader. I might have to try several times because I'll miss the the slot or I'll put it in backwards or something. And you hear this <sighs> like in line and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, people are very um, unaware. And I get the fact that like they don't know that I have this disability. But at the same time, I think people should be more aware that there could be something like that. Um, another invisible disability that millions of people have is mental health. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people are very quick to uh, say, you forgot to take your crazy pills, things like that. That's ableist. Mm -hmm. That's not okay. That's not funny. I mean, so people have gotten to the point that, yes, while they don't say like retard as much and things mm -hmm. like that, people do definitely still say very ableist things. Um, so it's it's been, you know, very life-changing and very traumatic for me um, to go through the physicality of, of losing sight, walking into things, falling down, things like that. But then also to see the way people react to that. Um, you know, something like, where is the so-and-so? It's right in front of your face. 
okay, can you show me? Like, mm. don't realize how much um, you use your eyes. And I know that sounds so stupid, but you really don't. Like, you don't mm -hmm. realize. If you put on a mask, an eye mask, and try to walk around, you're going to realize, holy shit. Like, I didn't realize just how easy it is to take advantage of, you know, having that sight. Um, so, yeah, and it's not to freak anyone out. What I have is very rare, but, you know, just at, the fact that it happens overnight is, is you know, why essentially, you know, my life changed so much. Well, and you didn't have time mentally to prepare for it. Like with my dad's situation, when I talk about it, like he eventually ended up in a wheelchair, but, you know, it was a gradual decline. Um, for this, it's like one day, everything changes. And yeah. to be like hit with that, and then to have the response from people, it just kind of compounds all of it. And that's why I think like, when you make these posts, like sharing your experience, it's so important because nobody really thinks about these things. Like I myself, I don't think about these things. Like I probably have been in the grocery store sometimes and waiting, you know, in front of some or behind someone and they're taking too long. And it's like, oh, my God, please hurry up. But I don't think about these sorts of things, because, as you said, it's an invisible disability. And I think it's a good reminder to everyone to just be more mindful of other individuals because we don't necessarily know what's what's happening like for me i felt like i was always like woke for lack of a better word because i i dealt with disabilities and like you know i i you know have been in these situations where i'm pushing my dad in a wheelchair on the sidewalk and i'm blocking a bunch of people who want to get by and you know you you don't you don't hear comments but you hear the heavy breathing the sighs and it's yeah. like oh my god fuck you fuck you like you know what i mean um but you know there's different things like and, and you write up like mental health these invisible disabilities that we kind of like, we know exist, but don't grapple with in a real concrete way. I think it's important that people share their stories, especially someone like you, who has a lot of um, like uh, recognition and you have a platform. Because I don't know anyone who's blind, um, legally blind. So you're like basically my one person who's opened my eyes to all of this. And it really, it does make you think like we, we take so much for granted. Like, you know, just something as simple as our senses, you know, hearing, seeing, like to know what that would mean for us to lose one is it, it would be completely life changing. So I think that like, in a way, having people share these stories is um, it's life changing for other people in a way, not in as like significant as a way, but just, just to like shed light on it, like the things that you notice, the way that you um see more ableism now whereas before maybe you hadn't you know thought about these things it's really interesting and for me like yeah. go ahead i think you know uh, something i've had you know other visually impaired people reach out to me about it is that i just co-wrote a book um right. and people don't realize like the the process of that like I dictated everything. I didn't type anything. I just verbally said it. And my co-author, Pat, had to read everything back to me. Um, it probably took us twice the time to write the book because of, you know, because of that disability. But we did it. And I'm so freaking proud. I never thought, you know, that I could do something like that after losing, you know, so much of my sight. Um, so I've had people who are blind and legally blind, um, and visually impaired, reach out to me and, you know, share their stories. And it's really incredible, like hearing them say, well, I, I went to college after I became blind and things like that. It's so inspiring. Yeah, it's it's incredible. Um and I think that it's important that you don't let it defeat you. But I wanted to ask you, like, is there is that like a double edged sword in a way because you've managed to accomplish so much? Like you wrote a book as someone who's legally blind. Like, does that give people a little bit of a sense of, oh, well, you know, you're fine then. You know, I, you know, it's it, it doesn't affect you. Like, how do people respond to that? Because I feel like the fact that you wrote a book legally blind to me is like astonishing. Like, it's crazy. And like doing these little things, like just like browsing the internet, like it's different if you are legally blind. So like, because you're able to do so much still, um, how do people respond to that in a way? Like, does that question make sense? Because it's it's always like, um, 
you know, there's this expectation if you're ignorant, like you don't know, like when I, when I thought of people who were legally blind, I envisioned people with like a cane and sunglasses and not really, and having someone guide them around because that's all I've seen in public to know that they were blind. But I never thought of people who were legally blind, who still have a little bit of eyesight, you know, who still can, you know, um, walk themselves and they can guide themselves. Although there's, there's some difficulties. Like, um, is there a difference do you think between like, um, those sorts of, uh, of folks who are like completely blind and more, um, I don't know if the question makes sense sort of, but like, um, just, I guess I'm kind of touching on expectations of like what people expect. I, think I, I did have someone who I considered an acquaintance, uh, say something to me a week ago about, uh, he, he doesn't think it's as bad mm. as I imply it is. And I cried for like three days <laughs> uh -huh. because I'm like, how dare you? Like, how dare you? You, you have no idea what I go through. Um, so I think most people like understand the fact mm -hmm. that there's technology and like when I'm, you know, uh, posting on Twitter, it's, you know, I'm speaking into something, it's typing for me, it's like not that uncommon. Um, so I think most people probably assume that's the kind of stuff I do. Uh, but yeah, that the one person who said that to me, it really got this, it got to me and I thought, are my, do my viewers think this of me? Do they think I'm like exaggerating or yeah. something? Um, and, you know, it's one person, but it just, you know, you know what it's like being on the air and having so many viewers and stuff. And it's like someone will say something and you're just kind of like, do a lot of people feel that way? The negativity you know? stays with you so much more than the positivity, which it is, does. it's so weird. I really honestly felt like I was like, I should seriously like copy some of my medical documentation <laughs> and, like pmm because i was so just disgusted mm -hmm. so yeah i mean there's gonna be some of that but in at the same time like i know um what i'm going through so yeah. it's and you not don't have to prove anything to anyone like i think that the response from people will be like oh well you're you accomplished this you wrote a book so it must not be that bad and then there's going to be people who are like that's incredible like you wrote a book and you're legally blind like wow like it's just interesting because like for me my situation is a little bit different but i have panic disorder which is where you have panic attacks so i'll do something which is really bold that someone with panic attacks wouldn't do like, you know, speak at an event or something or, or give a toast at a wedding or something. And then a month later, I'll like inexplicably seem like I'm, I'm really flaky as a friend that I'd make up excuses why I can't visit you and and see you. And it's like, well, you did that. You did all of that. And you're you're meaning to tell me that you don't want to drive an hour when it's like, you know, it, it's not like it's always static, like situations change for people with these invisible disabilities, you know, where it's like sometimes you feel like. You're, you're doing a little bit better than usual and you could push yourself to do more. Other times you can't, you know, the situation changes. And that's one thing that I think is important is that like none of this is ever static, you know, like for, for my dad, for example, he wasn't just like one day in a wheelchair, unlike your situation. Like he sometimes needed a wheelchair because he was too weak to stand up. And then other times he, he, he you know, um, he would be fine. He could actually walk to the kitchen, go to the bathroom. So it, it changes. And so, you know, it's interesting watching people who don't deal with it respond to that because it's like, well, you did this. So why can't you just do this? You know, um, and that's always something that you don't think about unless you're in that in that situation. So it's just it's interesting. And I think it's so important. Like, thank you for sharing your experience because people don't know about these things, you know. Yeah, and I, I could have been one of them. I try to think back and hell i've probably been the same way i feel like we all like we've all done something that you know um it, that we're not proud of because we're ignorant and ignorant isn't necessarily like me meant to be a pejorative it's just that if we don't know about somebody else's struggle um and we're not privy to what they're going through of course you know we, we might just be in the moment mad that they're taking too long or or whatever you know and it's important because like this really does remind people that we're all human beings 
And it's not as, as simple as like, okay, well, this lady who's swiping her credit card a hundred times, she's not just like moving in, in slow motion because she's drunk or something stupid. Like she, <laughs> she's, she has a, a disability, you know? I so. could be both. I don't know. So. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.